Hey everyone, in this demo video I'm going to run you through the process of applying facial animation to your Daz character within iClone. Give a chance to be more lifelike than ever. Look at how In this video, I'll create a refined logo. facial animation with subtle detail using advanced techniques and real-time tools. I'm using a Daz character here as an example, but in fact the procedure works with any character from any 3D tool, as long as they have facial bones and or facial blend shapes. We're going to start off with the source for the lip sync first. In this case, I'm using text-to-speech. Once I enter in my dialog and press OK, you'll see the raw lip sync that is created I'm automatically. And intangible. However, Ryclone gives me the chance to be more lifelike. The original lip sync will likely need some improvement, but thankfully iClone lets you go more in depth to refine the facial shapes. From here, I can manually adjust and refine every single Visemi shape that is automatically generated by iClone within the timeline. In the Visemi track, all you need to do is double click on any of the Visemi keys, and a window will come up that will allow you to edit that Visemi. You can completely change the Visemi shapes by selecting another thumbnail. Hi there. If you want to keep the same shape and adjust its strength, you can also do that by adjusting the expressiveness slider. Use the None thumbnail to reset your facial Visemi shape for any key. The minimum and maximum values for your expressiveness slider can also be modified in the Expression Editor in 3D Exchange. If the Visemi keys are slightly off, you can also move them down the track to a more suitable place to further sync the facial animation movements with the audio. Before we move on to the Puppet tool, I'll show you the refined result after adjusting the Visemi shapes. Hi there. I'm virtual and intangible. However, Ryclone gives me the chance to be more lifelike than ever. Look at how natural and elegant my lip movement are as I talk to you. In the Puppet tool, you can individually select facial features and head rotation to only record those for your first layer of animation. Advanced users can also go into the facial feature values and modify each individual puppet profile even further. Once you have the edit property values open, you can press the F2 key to open the specific values for different mouse movement patterns. If I want to decrease the strength of the eyeball movement, for example, I can take the values down to 20 from 100, which will create a much more subtle movement. In the mouse movement values, I can also increase the values for various parts of the eyebrows, which will customize my current profile to include a more apparent eyebrow movement. If I adjust the values in the X plus column, that means that when I move my mouse to the right, the movement strength for those particular facial features will be higher. You can test out the result at any time. Keep in mind that X plus corresponds with mouse movements to the right, X minus with mouse movements to the left, while Y plus and Y minus correspond with up and down mouse movements respectively. To give a more complete overall expression, you'll probably want to adjust the mouse movement values for various features in addition to the eyebrows. You can see now that when I test out my custom puppet profile, that there are some subtle differences in how the different facial features animate. After I've refined the look for my eye and cheeks, I can go back in and adjust the values for the lips as well. These tend to be the more important values, so you'll want to spend some more time refining them. Once you've worked out the profile that you want, you can save it as a single profile or separate different facial features into different profiles and perform your facial puppet in layers. Here I'm going to load my eyebrow profile and do that first. Now if I press enter instead of space when recording, the animation will proceed at halftime, giving you more ability to refine the accuracy and timing of your expressions. Hi there. I'm virtual and intangible. However, Ryclone gives me the chance to be more lifelike than ever. Look at- You can then play back and check the results in real time. Hi there. I'm virtual and intangible. However, Ryclone gives me the chance to be more lifelike than ever. If I'm satisfied with the eyes, I can then load in my puppet profile for the mouth. This puppeteering will simply be to add a subtle smile. Hi there. I'm virtual and intangible. However, Ryclone gives me the chance to be more lifelike than ever. Look at how natural and delicate my lip movement are as I talk to you. Hi there. 
I'm virtual and intangible. However, finally, after that's done, I can do the blink by just erasing the other facial features from my template on the right and only selecting the bridge of the nose. Hi there. I'm virtual and intangible. However, Ryclone gives me the chance to be more lifelike than ever. Look at how natural and elegant my lip movement are as I talk to you. We'll play back one more time to view the result. Hi there. I'm virtual and intangible. However, Ryclone gives me the chance to be more lifelike than ever. Look at how natural and elegant my lip movement are as I talk to you. Once your animation is set, you want to go in and adjust the lighting, which will further enhance the appearance. First, I'll select one of my lights in the Content Manager and change it to a Spotlight in the Modify panel. I want to make this a side light, so I'll place it beside my character's face as best I can here, and then turn up the Multiply value, which will increase the brightness. Next, I'll turn off my scene light and add in another front-facing light that will give a more subtle and soft illumination to her face. Next, you'll want to fine-tune the shadows by adjusting the values in the Modify panel to the right. You can add some blur to the shadows and then fine-tune the opacity and blur level to get the best results. Finally, you can add an additional point light in front of the character's face to add that warm and sophisticated final touch. After that, it's just fine-tuning light direction and location to get the most dramatic shadows. You can also soften the shadow edge by increasing the shadow resolution in your scene. After that, all you need to do is add in your background and atmosphere, which can easily be done by adding in a prop for the background and then fooling around with the settings in the Atmosphere section of the Stage tab. Adding a slight bit of fog will help to give it a bit more of a dreamy look. If you want your character to look at the camera, you can use that feature in the Modify panel of the Actor tab. Then you can decide how much you want the head to move according to the camera as opposed to the eyes. If you're satisfied with all that, then finally render and play back. Hi there. I'm virtual and intangible. However, Ryclone gives me the chance. Hi there. I'm virtual and intangible. However, Ryclone gives me the chance to be more lifelike than ever. Look at how natural and elegant my lip movement are as I talk to you.